So this is going to be Olivia's third sampling day. Is that right? I believe it is. Yep. And and we have sent you a transcript of the first sampling day, and you said you haven't looked at it, and that's fine. In fact, it's maybe even better that you haven't looked at it. Uh, when you're motivated to look at it, you should feel free to look at it. You said that that you didn't want to look at the whole thing. There are there is commentary. What you would find if you looked at it is that there's commentary throughout the transcript. And that oh, you've added commentary. That yes, and yeah. that commentary oh. is is in green, so you should be able to skip or search for comment colon, and yeah. and skip through it if you're motivated to see what commentary I was writing. Oh, we I were, am interested. We, we were writing. Yeah, I wasn't really and interested in hearing, reading what I had said, um, but I am interested in reading what you think. Yeah, that's why I'm telling. That's why I'm telling you this. So, I, so, you you knew what you said. You knew what had, what has happened in the in the conversation, but you didn't. You haven't seen what we have said about it, and uh, mm -hmm. and you should feel free to look at it or not. Uh, the object of the of the exercises, uh, the main object of the exercise is to try to get at Olivia's experience in high fidelity, and so we don't want the commentary to corrupt that. But on on the other hand, I think we're doing a pretty good job of staying attached to our task or staying staying faithful to the task, I guess you might say. And uh, and I don't think the commentary is going to screw that up. And if, if you do read the comment the comments, and you have comments of your own that you would like to either append to those comments or write your own comments or disagree with the comments or, or whatever you should feel a, a free agent in that regard either do it or don't do it whatever whatever turns you on these we don't really have a we, we don't really know why we're doing any of this stuff we, th we think this provides a window into into something which is seems to be a value and the people who are participating in, of which there are three in this exercise, if they have commentary about what we're doing here, they should, they sh and, and they feel like making it known, they, they should make it known in whatever, in a, whatever way, either in comments in the, in the uh, document, or, you know, you've got your own blog, or whatever you call the things that you do, you can do whatever it is that you want. It's, So that, I guess, is my preliminary comments. Anybody else have preliminary comments that they would like to make before we look at the beeps? Well, I have one that is maybe a, a comment and, or, and a slight question. So I, I feel like I was wearing it for three hours, but I don't know. For whatever reason, I've only got five here. I think I definitely didn't note down a few, probably because I was in the middle of a conversation and thought I've already got one of those they're not there's nothing particularly interesting in those um because as we've established I just am saying I'm just there's nothing else going on when I'm talking um and then I wondered if I should pop it in for an hour this morning just to try and get a couple more beeps but then look to be honest I didn't get around to it but I did wonder if that actually disturbs your if you prefer all the beeps to be in a stretch um or not looks like not so th there's very little about this process that is cast in stone other than we're interested in the moment before the beep and we're interested in as much high fidelity in as high fidelity as we can get other than that we can do whatever it is that we want to do if you want to collect the beeps while you're standing on your head in the corner then go stand on your head in the corner and collect beeps or whatever we have a mild preference for gathering all the beeps at one time because that makes it easier for you to forget that you're wearing the beeper. But if there's a good reason to to do it some other way, we're happy to have you have you have you do it. And 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 we also don't feel strongly about six beeps. We five beeps, seven beeps. We say six because it generally takes us about an hour to talk about six beeps. And but sometimes it takes us an hour to talk about one beep, and other times it takes us five seconds to talk about one beep, and so it doesn't really matter. Okay. 
And I would say about skipping beeps, we have a mild preference for not skipping beeps because we don't trust people when they say there's nothing interesting going on here. And that's not because we think Olivia is a liar. It's because we think people don't know what's interesting. And uh, because what's interesting to you, what, what, what seems dull and boring to you might be very interesting. Mm. And, and I probably would have accepted that they were, you know, so I was doing it yesterday during a work day and I think at, at the times I was actually on the phone um, in the middle of a work conversation so I couldn't exactly stop the conversation and say, hold on, I just need to um, uh, write down, you know. Right. So, and, um, and we understand that too. We understand that life goes on and, and, <laughs> and there are limitations. And well, and I think the other comment is that I think I still want to try and... <clears throat> I haven't quite found what I feel to be the best time to do this because, you know, as we discussed on the first time, in you know, on a, on a weekend morning, there's just too much going on and I don't feel alone enough with my own thoughts. Um, and on a work day, obviously, I feel like my head is invaded by the various external stimuli of work. And I have noticed, <clears throat> you know, thinking about this... Um, in the times where I don't have external stimuli in the form of people or um, work information, that I that is when I I've, I've sort of um, you know like for, say for example while I'm running or you know doing a task where I'm on my own um, and a task that doesn't involve reading or something like if I'm cooking on my own or gardening or running or swimming that I notice very interesting what i consider interesting and and specific thoughts um that i i feel like had i noted them down i would be able to speak about them with much greater confidence than the ones that i speak about here now of course i can't wear the beeper when i'm swimming um even running it's a bit heavy i probably could um and maybe I should try that but then I'd have to stop when I was running and that would be but you know I really do notice these very specific often often quite wordy but not always thoughts um and 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 I feel frustrated because I haven't yet to capture any of those in this uh yeah well I would say you should wear it whenever you think you might find it interesting hmm and because we're never really going to get a full random sample of Olivia's experience from beginning to end. We we don't claim to get the real Olivia. We just claim to try to get the beeps that we get and try to get them as best as we can. That That's really mm. our goal. So the you're right. The problem is without limitation of needing to do it in the 24 hours before this call, um, those times don't necessarily happen in those preceding 24 hours. Well, then we should we should work out a way that we could do this, that you should be able, maybe we should figure out a way that you should find a time when you can do it, and then you should let us know and say, yeah. I'm going to do it today, can we meet tomorrow? Yeah. And then we figure out whether we can do that, and yeah. maybe one or the other of us, maybe Alec and I both can't do it, but one or the other of us could do it, and mm. and so we could we could, we could could work that however it is that we we could. All right, well, maybe we can try that for the next one rather than having it scheduled in at this time that we try and make it a little bit looser. And, and I would say, yes, don't wear it when it's swimming. The machine will not like it like to be swam with. But any other time, I think you can do it, including running. And, and if you would prefer to record notes rather than jot down notes, mm. so you're probably running with your phone anyway, you could run and click on your... You probably you're probably good at recording on your phone, given your job. Yep. You could record your uh, what you would have typically written down. You could you could speak it. Yep. And then we can deal with how how we would deal with that in the, in the interview. You could either play it back for us in the interview, or you could transcribe it before the interview, or or, or whatever. That those are the kinds of details which which we are not. We do not feel constrained to do it the same way every time. We mm -hmm. we we're trying to get glimpses of of Olivia's experience, and we're going to do whatever it is that we can that we have to do or can, want to do or think we should do to try to get that. 
So if you want a word standing on your head in the corner and you think that the only way that we can understand that is to stand on our heads in the corner, then that's, we'd probably do that too, and have a standing on our heads conversation. We've never done that, but but presumably there would be there would we're all, we're open to alternatives. Let's put it that way. I'm not sure I'm capable of standing on my head in the corner. I know. I was going to say I might have to bow out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, but we could try. That's right. We could try. <laughs> well, and I, you know, I would add that. So I think it is. It's a tempting idea that if what we're doing is more interesting or more solitary or whatever, that our thoughts might be more vibrant or, you know, and that might be the case. And I, I think that would be fascinating to find out for you. But it also might be, you know, that you're, you know, deeply meditating and at the moment of the beep, you're just feeling a tickle on your neck. And I, we think that's totally interesting, too. You know, so I just don't want to I don't want you to go searching for experiences that are going to like wow anybody because we we're pretty wowed by the mundane here you know as long as that's what's in your experience that's what we care about yeah i agree with that there there are three of us involved in this task and and all of us should have some say in when we when we do whatever it is that we do. So did that answer that question? It does, yes. And did we have other questions, other comments before we? All right, then 3.1. 3.1, okay. So I was listening to a podcast and and so I was listening to a podcast on the kitchen speaker as I um, uh, was sorting out the vegetables that had arrived in our weekly vegetable box. Um, so I had the beeper in my ear still and I didn't have a headphone. The, the sound was coming through a speaker. Um, right at the moment or, you know, short, right before the beep, it was an episode of, I don't know if you listened to um, the Ezra Klein show. It's a weekly podcast where Ezra, Ezra Klein does an interview and he was doing an interview with this woman who has a philosophy about parenting. And he, sorry, this is too much information. He'd su just said the word upset, but maybe it's actually not too much information. He'd said the word upset right before the beat, um, talking about when he, so he has a toddler and talking about, you know, what something, what happens when his toddler is upset. And as he had or immediately after you know obviously the, the conversation is about toddlers and how you respond when they're upset and blah 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 um immediately after he had said this word and at the time of the beep i think that what was in my head and i'm just going to pause while this plane goes over my head Australia just reopened its international borders to non-Australian citizens yesterday and the flight so traffic. Hang, hang on for a minute. I've lost, I've lost your audio, Olivia. Can you hear her clearly, Alec? Well, it was just cutting out a little, I think, because of the airplane noise, but I don't think we've lost her audio. I, I, I'm, I am I still it. here? Hello, you're hello, now, hello. Now you're back. So could you uh, say... Maybe could the you plane was literally flying overhead, I think. So, so I, I was... Up, I was along with you when you were talking about Ezra talking about toddlers how to respond and he says upset mm -hmm. and then I lost you okay so Ezra Klein says the word upset and at that moment I think in my head I have a sort of um, what I have noted down is general unspecified thought slash visualization of my own child being upset And can we can we give a name to your own child? I don't care if we use the right <laughs> name, but it's easier to talk about a, an individual person with a name. Yes. yes, we can use her name. Her name is Aspasia, A-S-P-A-S-I-A. -A. Okay. And so at the moment of the beep, you have a general unspecified thought or visualization of Aspasia being upset. 
set. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. And and what do you mean by a general unspecified thought or maybe a visualization? Well, I wasn't thinking, oh, I really hate it when she's upset and I feel very uncomfortable and I always want to stop her being upset. I think I was just, which is maybe why I've written down visualization and, and or because I think, you know, I, I do think I actually probably was seeing her face, a sad face. Um, you know, yeah, as I, like the whole conversation was about how adults can respond to toddlers that are upset and how it makes you and I think so I was just kind of thinking about that generally in relation to my toddler (laughs) rather I mean he was it was funny because he was talking about his toddler and I was thinking about my toddler okay and so let let's start from the premise that it might be possible to think about such a thing without having any visual imagery at all and it might be possible to think about such a thing and have visual imagery. Both of those things, I think, are entirely possible. And so the, the, one of my questions is, is there really visual imagery or does it seem like I'm talking about visual imagery because it seems like there must have to be. <coughs> if I'm going to be thinking about a space, I've got to be seeing her. Mm. I, I can't say for sure. I don't think I feel that there needs to be i feel comfortable with the idea of thinking in a sort of general non-specific way without an image um so i don't think i just wrote it because i felt like it had to be there but i think if it was there it was not i mean it was not a you know crystal clear image it was sort of a notional image in the way that the (laughs) The thought was a notional thought as well. So do you, let's start with the basics. So as best you can say, do you see in your imagination Aspasia? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yes, I think I can and do, but not necessarily in... I feel like sometimes when some people describe their own visual imagery, it's very clear. They might be able to describe what she would be wearing or, you know, whereas I feel like my visual imagery does exist but is more is more general. Like if I'm seeing someone in my mind, I'm not necessarily seeing them in a specific set of clothes with a specific hairstyle and okay. doing a specific thing. So, so what makes these conversations dif- difficult is that the word see is a quite complicated word because sometimes C has visual characteristics. You know, I can say color and shape and whatever. And sometimes C has cognitive characteristics like, oh, I see, in the, in the sense of I understand. And so sometimes when people say, well, I see aspasia, they might mean, well, I sort of have an understanding of what she would be like and there's no visual characteristics at all. And sometimes when they say, I see aspasia, they say, well, I see her from the neck up and her, she's looking a little bit off to the left and, and can describe the visual characteristics. I don't and, know. It. <laughs> okay. Was it a question? Which is mine? Well, yeah, I guess sooner or later I'm going to ask that question. But. So I mean, it, it does... F- well, just to respond to what you said, I mean, it does feel like my C is more the thought kind of C and less the image kind of C. Okay. And I'm but not, I, don't I, don't, know. I don't want to know about, about, about Olivia's seeing in general. I want to know about this particular beep. Mm, okay. Ezra, Ezra's talking, and at the, at the moment I see Aspasia. I'm thinking about Aspasia being upset. And and I see Aspasia, and I would like to know whether there are visual characteristics. Do you see just her face or her whole body? And do you, is she looking to the left or to the right? Is she can is this in color, or black and white? Those would be the visual characteristics of C. Mm. Or I would like to know whether the, I sort of understand what Aspasia is like when she's upset, but there aren't any visual characteristics. Mm. And either one of those is fine with me. I don't. I don't have a preference. I just want to know what we're talking about. Yeah, but I'm not sure it's necessarily either 
just one. I mean, look, it's definitely, it, it's not an image that I can say it's black and white and she's looking to the left and she's wearing this and she's it's standing not up or sitting down. It's not that. Okay. Um, but I'm not yet willing to fully discount it as not existing in a visual way at all. Okay. Thinking back to it, I feel like there was... Um, you know, so we, our house kind of, um, we have this open, uh, like the kitchen sort of opens up onto the back here. And it's also so like, there's a lot of time being spent in and in around the kitchen and in the outside area. Um, you know, and it's open kind of most of the year. Anyway, so that she, she's in that room a lot where I was standing and, um, and in and around it, you know, she might be kind of buzzing in and out and I, and it's often a room and <laughs> especially recently because she really wants to eat frozen peas straight out of the freezer and we don't want to give her frozen peas all the time out of the freezer. And so she's often quite upset in the kitchen. Um, so I think I, the visual, I think she was there in the kitchen, standing there in the kitchen, um, looking sad and maybe, because, you know, and, and I think I was, you know, I feel like I'm often comforting her there in the kitchen Um uh, but it wasn't, you know, it's not a, as I said, it's a hazy kind of fuzzy vision. It's not a precise, there she is standing there or sitting on that step looking sad. It's kind of a, and it might sort of almost be a collage of various instances of her being upset. Okay. So there's some sense of her being in the kitchen in the vicinity of the refrigerator in the context of frozen, and I couldn't, frozen pa peas. Peas. peas, peas, frozen peas. Uh -huh. Okay, in the context of frozen peas. So I understand that's what, that, that's what they're, and the, and the question is, how much of that is understood, which would not be a visual thing, and how much of it is seen in a visual way? And the answer is, that I, I guess what we're saying is, I'm not 100% sure how to answer that question. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Sorry, I just realized I was nodding, which is no good for your audio, or mine, for that matter. Yes. Well, you you will see that in the transcript of here, we're going to look at that I sometimes say Olivia nods in the affirmative or something like that. But, uh, so I can deal with that. <laughs> we can deal with that. And, uh, and so can I add one thing to this beep? Sure. Um, so I've, I've now noted down what I was doing at the time um, and uh, which at that time I was putting um, like green string beans into a cloth bag because um, the vegetables all just come in this big box and then I kind of sort them out. So um, I was definitely paying attention to sort of trying to get the beans in in a vertical fashion so that they would all fit rather than a mess of tangled, you know, green beans. Um, but I have noted down a tiny bit of putting green beans in a bag. So look, and now I feel like I'm, I'm not, you know, obviously the first two times I didn't note down anything about sort of my physical surroundings or activities, actions. Um, and they didn't really feature in beeps, except for times when they did, when I was, say, for example, those beeps that I was writing. I have now taken to noting that down. Is it because you asked the question, or is it because I... Am, uh, so are they, is it actually there in my mind, or is it that I'm stopping after the beep and then thinking, oh, how much was I paying attention to what I was actually doing? I can't answer that at all, either. So I got distracted a little bit in, the, in, the, in there. So are you coming down on the side of this is what I was doing. I was parallelizing green beans. But I, I don't know how much of my attention was on that. Or, or, I think... Yeah, go ahead. I, uh, I mean, I think I was... And, you know, in many ways I was, I was paying attention in the fact that I wasn't just chucking the beans in the bag I was kind of trying to line them up a little bit so they would fit uh, like I think it was there a little bit in my head but it wasn't not much not okay. I don't know if I would have noted it down had 
we not sort of started to talk about those things. Okay. okay. Well, and sometimes we ask people to sort of quantify what they mean when they say this is a tiny bit of my experience. You know, they might say, well, 90% of the experience is about aspasia and being upset, but maybe 10% is about the green beans. And, and maybe we can't say here, but that can be a helpful... Or 60-40. Yeah, right, yeah. right, or any other combination. 99 well, and there was also an element of listening to and and processing the words I was hearing in the podcast as well. Because a lot of the time I'm listening to something, as we've kind of discussed, I'm just, I'm not, th- you know, I'm just absorbing the input. But I did notice that that at this particular moment, there was this other thought that was existing alongside absorbing the input. And I don't know, I, I mean, I could put a bodgy percentage on it. Maybe it would be like, I don't know, 40% input, 40% uh, thought slash image of aspasia, 20% what I'm doing. Sure. Maybe 40, 50, 10 And we won't hold you to the numbers, you know, and maybe maybe that's not helpful for you, but gives us a general sense. Yeah, I think the the proportion is perhaps yeah, the um yeah, the Right, right. So when you say 40% into the Ezra Klein show, is that well, I'm I'm directly experiencing that before the footlights of my in of my consciousness in the same since that my thought about my daughter is before the footlights of my consciousness? Or are you saying, well, I was, I was certainly processing that because I understood what he was saying and I'm not going to... Well, gonna what's the difference? Between those two, between it being before the footlights of my consciousness and definitely processing it. Well, last time we talked about driving... And we said that we we agreed, I think, that that we could sometimes we, you and I could have a conversation. I think we said, and and we could be totally engrossed in the conversation, and one of us was be driving, and that one could have been driving without driving skillfully, without running into cars and making the proper turns and getting us where we were, we were going, and and yet a beep would never would never say that was before the footlights of my consciousness. What was before the footlights of my consciousness was the conversation I was having with Olivia. Mm, mm. So it's possible that this would be the same way. Ezra is talking, and I'm processing what's going on in the same way as I would be driving. But I was really, as far as the footlights of my consciousness, what I was directly paying attention to was Aspasia and her upsetness. Mm, no, I see. What, I think I see what you're saying. No, it feels like the the content of the podcast was also before the footlights of my consciousness mm-hmm. and I, uh yeah because sorry once again there's an airplane so what happened what happens when the airplane goes on is i can't hear the airplane all i hear is that your voice gets all right should we, should we go to number two given the time i think we should go to number two given that we've probably muddied the water on number one yeah. yep in a good way number two Okay, so number two, I've just written down mid-conversation and nothing else. I, I, yeah, I think that was possibly even a work call. So you're in a conversation, and is this one of those where it seems like I'm just in the conversation, nothing else in my experience? I, yeah, I mean, I yes. Yes, and, and certainly I'm just in the conversation, not able to stop and, and interrogate my thoughts as well. Sure. Okay. So maybe we just say a mid conversation. I didn't really, I can't, I couldn't stop and pay attention to my experience. We don't know. Let's skip to number three. Yeah. Okay. Good deal. Number three. Okay. So number three, I'm back at the kitchen, back in the kitchen. It seems like I spend a lot of time in the kitchen. Um, I'm back at the kitchen looking at th- three. So there's three nectarines sitting on the bench. It's funny, I don't think I'm, I'm not still doing the sorting task. I don't know, maybe this was cleaning up from lunch or making lunch or something. There was three nectarines on the bench and I was just looking at the nectarines. And I really felt like I was quite 
there was nothing else. I was really just looking at the three nectarines. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I wrote that I think Darcy, my partner, had just said to me, oh no, I had just said the words. He'd asked me where something was and I said, it's on the fridge. Um, but I felt like I had said that without thinking and I was really quite absorbed in those three nectarines looking at them. Okay. Just going to close my door because this rain is really loud. All good? Yep. Okay. Okay, so I guess let me just establish not take this for granted my eyes are aimed at the nectarines and i'm i'm registering them i'm experiencing these nectarines yep and anything in particular about them or i'm just looking and seeing them as they are i'm into the color or the shape or the threeness or i think a bit of all of that and i mean yeah definitely the color the shape um you know the smooth texture of the skin the fact that there was three of them just sitting in almost like a sort of triangular shape. Okay, and so I want to understand that. So I guess I can imagine that I'm looking at this triangular configuration of nectarines and it happens to be that they're orange and they're round and they're in a triangle. Or I can imagine that I am looking at the nectarines and I am particularly noticing their orangeness or their shape or some other quality. Does that distinction make sense? No. So I guess in the in the first way of saying it, I'm seeing the nectarines and of course they have sensory qualities and if you want me to tell you about them, I can. They're in a triangle, they're orange, they're whatever. In the second possibility and I'm you know there's a million others but in the second possibility here I am particularly into some sensory quality my experience is actually more about the orangeness than the nectarineness mm, I see or no it feels like know. the former of those two uh-huh okay like I'm just taking these in and I'm getting it accurately I'm seeing them as they are is that right yeah Including the triangular triangle placement of it, that I'm not more interested in the triangle placement of it than anything else. No, nope. no. Nope. happen to be they happen to be triangle shaped, but that it, that doesn't grab me. Mm -mm. Okay. And you said that you were also at the same time, or maybe just before you've you've responded to your partner. Is that? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And then I think you said that feels automatic. Does that mean like not really in my experience? It's just coming out, but I don't actually experience myself saying, quote, on the fridge? I mean, I heard myself saying it um, audibly. I heard it. I, you know, I, I produced it, but without thought. Mm -hmm. And so does that mean that I had no presentiment of it, it just came out? Or does that mean it's it's kind of like the driving example where this isn't actually before the footlights of my consciousness. I'm making sense, I'm accurate, the thing is on the fridge, but really this is this is outside the, the footlights of, of my consciousness. Um, so he asked me where the shopping list was and the shopping list is on the fridge. And it's always been on the fridge. Um, and so, like the driving example, like I feel like I just respond and say it's on the fridge because I know very well, I don't even need to look, I know that that's where it is, right? Like it's, I, whether this is after the fact, there's definitely a tiny bit of irritation at the fact that he asked me where this thing is that is always there and and like, you know, it's that like how that can be <laughs> annoying. It's insight into my relationship here that I am now publishing on YouTube. Um, yeah. I so look. I can't. I I don't know. I I mean, I do feel like I've felt a twang of 
irritation um, and, and maybe I meditated on the nectarines as a way to distract myself from that but once again I'm after the fact attributing way too much here um, I had said it I had said it without thinking without formulating you know taking time to think about my response to his question think about what is the answer and then say the answer it was question answer came out without thought okay so I think I'm understanding that there's no analysis there's no thought I don't have to check the fridge or whatever I just say this um, is there any way to say or can we say whether this um, so I get there's no thought, but the speaking of it, is that in my experience, either the producing or the hearing? I don't want us to just assume, you know, you could put noise out in the world and not, you know, be registering it. I think I definitely register the no the sound, but I okay. don't, yeah. In an auditory way, I hear it, not, I don't speak it, I hear it. Obviously, in, in the real world, I'm speaking it, but my experience is of... The hearing of it rather than the speaking of it? Or can't say? I mean, it, 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 it feels like I, I hear and speak it at the same time. Okay. Um, so so let, me, let me ask what the, the question that Alec asked, asked a minute ago. Can we put numbers on this? What, what percentage of your experience oh. is about... The, the nectarine speaking and what is about the seeing of the tangerines and or the nectarines and what what percentage is about the irritation twang i'm gonna go 80 percent nectarines like 10 percent speaking maybe five percent five to ten percent irritation okay then i think we probably shouldn't try to Analyze too many of the details down at ten percent would would that's just tough to try to figure that out or impossible Sorry. I don't know. <laughs> my phone is being hijacked. Hold on there we go. Wow, bizarre okay we had, sorry about that. We've got some electronic issues today. I, just odd and do not disturb it starts playing a video someone sent me. <laughs> but Weird. that seems like that would be disturbing me. You would think. <laughs> <laughs> so shall we move on to number four? Yes, works for me. Okay, so number four. I have written down, wah, <laughs> or wah, what? Like, so the word what, but but hijacked, you know, like, is that a, a what or a what? There may have been a T at the end of it. Now, um, why? So thinking this word and, oh, yeah, okay. So I'm communicating with a colleague on a web chat, a Slack we use, like a, so a chat interface. And she had just told me that she needed to get this interview with someone because they were about to go offline to a retreat without their phone for six weeks. And I was thinking, and, and, and I was sort of poised to, t but like right as the beep went off, I, I had just read her message and was thinking, what? Like who goes away without their phone for six weeks these days? Um, so I've read, I've written this, hearing the sounds and seeing the letters. So I think, yeah, I, I'm doing both and I'm preparing to write it in. But in the end, I realized that wah is not a very professional and I ended up, sort of saying what <laughs> typing what instead of like w capital w capital h seven capital a's so at the moment of the beep this is an entirely imaginary experience mm -hmm. of why and yep. and i both hear it and see it written out yes and i i can only assume that the reason i see it written out is because i'm about to you know i'm i'm in a I'm communicating maybe, in a... Maybe so, but let's not worry about that. Let, let, okay. It, there's a lot of reasons why you might see it or not see it, and I don't think we, I don't think we can get to the bottom of that. The question is whether mm -hmm. you do see it. Yeah. And I'm gathering the answer is yes, I do see it. 
Yes. And and the way I spell wa when I say wa is W H seven A's exclamation point. Uh, no I, exclamation point. And and I've written um, and look sevens an approximation several. Let's say several A's. Okay. And I'm not sure if there was going to be be a T on it. Like I'm not, you know. Like I think mid beep I was literally in the ah, but there may have been a. T- at the end of it. <laughs> okay. So at the moment of the beep, I, at, at the moment of the beep, I see W H A A A and some indeterminate number of A's, and yeah. I hear it at the same time. Mm-hmm. And are you more into the hearing it or the seeing it, or is that fifty-fifty or F- the same? Feels same? pretty fifty-fifty. All right. Then let's keep going with what you see. So uh, how 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 does how do you see this? What do you see? I think I see it typed. But yeah, yeah, I think I see. I, I think I do see it typed. So typed as on a computer screen, or typed as on a typewriter, or no, typed as on a computer screen, and probably as on sort of in in the window where I'm corresponding. And and is there color involved? And. In- no, no, it's, it's. I think it's black and white because, uh, well, not because, but, um, and I am typing in black and white. And when you say, I think it's black and white, does does that mean I'm not sure whether it's black and white? Or does that mean, well, let's call it black and white because I've got nothing better to call it than that. I feel reasonably confident that it's black and white. Okay. So I'm I'm reasonably confident that I am seeing... Wah in black and white in a window as if I were to type that. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. And and do I see it in motion as in more and more A's coming or or is, No, is, I don't see it in motion. Okay. And I'm confident about that too, it sounds like. Yeah. Okay. And does this seeing have any location to it? It's in my head, it's out in front of me, it's behind me. I mean, I point to this general area. I don't know, it's in my head. It's maybe sort of, and if I have to situate it in space, it's kind of just outside of my field of vision up behind me. But no, it's it's not. It's in that cavernous, dark representation of my head that I think I talked about last time. This space, a visual, okay. you know, an imaginary visual cavern that I think is a rendition of my head. Okay. And capital W or capital all, all caps? Either all caps or definitely W capital W. I think all caps, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Definitely a capital W. All right. So I, I, I'm understanding that we are saying that this is a visual experience. I am visualizing in my imagination W-H-A-A-A-A. Is that right? Yep. In the first beep, we talked about what might be a visualization of aspasia. Is that the same kind of a... Do we, do we mean I see these in the same way or a different way? Uh, I mean, that's an interesting question. Uh, I mean, it's a very different image. And it's a specific image in a way that, as I said, the image of aspasia was potentially a collage of various renditions of her um this is very clearly the letters and while i can't give you complete confidence about capital not capital color not color i'm very confident that i'm seeing defined specific letters okay well i can't say exactly how many a's okay and and so the in, the, in its most basic sense, does the word C have the same meaning here as it did with Aspasia? Yeah, yeah. So there's a, there's a visual seeing of Aspasia, and there's a visual seeing of the letters. The letters are more crystalline or unambiguous or, or whatever than Aspasia was. But they're, but they're both in the realm of I am visual imagining something. Yep. And then I'm also hearing wah. Is that right? 
Mm-hmm. Unless, Alec, did you have more questions about the seeing aspect? No. Okay, the, then I'm hearing, I'm hearing this. What, what, what does that mean? I mean, I'm, I'm hearing my voice in an exaggerated, vaguely comical way saying, wah! But I'm hearing my voice, my internal version of my voice, not my external version of my voice. And this is a hearing phenomenon as opposed to a speaking phenomenon? I don't experience yes. myself as saying wah. I no. experience the, as in the speaking into the tape recorder. This is, this is my inner tape recorder playing back to me wah. Is that... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it sounds like my voice. There's no question about that. Yeah. As I said, a, a, a sort of exaggerated, comical, performative. What? But yes, my my. But I but I could I could speak that aloud. I I could hear myself speaking that aloud in some kind of a situation. Yeah. Okay. Then I think I'm good. Me too, yeah. Is there one more? Did you say five? I have got five. Um, I do have, I've got a meeting at 10.30 that I probably need to spend a bit of time preparing for. Um, oh. I've also, look, for five I've just written reading and I think I was reading something and, you know, absorbing visual words in a way that I didn't, yeah feel like there was much else going on well and it sounds like maybe we don't have time to dive into it yeah i think i might need to leave it here for today if that's all right okay oh yeah i I didn't realize we were at an hour it's all good okay